Well, hello again, everybody. So today I wanted to come on here and talk to you about my demonic possession that I had back in August of 2015 and what got me to where I am today. I did a little bit of that when I did the video on my awakening and my attempted suicide. And if you guys have not had a chance to um, check that out, it is in the link. Uh, there's a link to it in the description box. Um, back in 2015, I started seeing a guy and um, I moved in with him later on and I didn't know anything about spirituality. I didn't know about, you know, real demonics. I didn't believe in any of that kind of stuff. You know, I just figured, you know, I was really just going through a bad bout uh, in life. And I didn't know that, you know, these kinds of things could be ca caused by um, entities, okay, dark forces. And so I started getting scratches down my back. And I remember there was one time where I was laying in bed and I was having a dream that a knife was coming through the mattress. And at the next morning when I woke up and I got up to go to the bathroom, the gentleman that I was seeing at the time looked at my back and said, what happened to your rib? And I'm like, what are you talking about? And he's, I had a huge gash across my right rib in the back. And I just started crying because I had just had that dream where in the night when I had the knife coming through the mattress in my dream, I remember squirming over to the side trying to get away from the knife. Well, when I did, I had actually had gotten cut by it. And it was so unbelievable. Next thing you know, I have these puncture wounds it, back here in right where your hair comes down. I had one on one side and one on the other. And in that, I had a dream that a snake had bit me. Well, when I looked at the man that I was dating on the back of his neck, he had two puncture wounds like this in the center of his neck. And at that same time, at, but I didn't know this until after I started doing um, astrology, um, there is the North Node and South Node. And in Vedic astrology, it's called Rahu and Ketu. And Rahu and Ketu happen to be North Node Rahu in Virgo, which I'm a Virgo. And South Node Ketu was in Pisces, and he was a Pisces. So it's Rahu and Ketu is a ser serpent, excuse me. And we had gotten bit by it. Okay, again. So as I went through, I, um, there, it created a lot of havoc in mine and his relationship. And he went completely demonic, was extremely narcissistic. At the same time, my entire life started shattering right before my eyes at speeds that I couldn't even keep up with. I, um, was going to court. I got fired because my boss was drunk. I had to go to court for that. I had to go to court to fi uh, fight for my unemployment. Then I had to go to court because I was suing her. And then I had to go to court because the school was uh, abusing my daughter. And then I had to go to court because my ex-husband showed up. And in the midst of all this, my whole world is crumbling. And I was petrified. I got down to a negative zero in size. If you go, I'm going to link the uh, videos of my exorcism through Paul Dale Roberts. He also has a YouTube channel and I will link his channel also and his credentials um, at the in the description box. So if you guys want to check that out as well. So during that time, I, and this went on for a year, it went on for a year. So before August 15th, it started going on in uh, 2014. So as I go through, like I'm trying to, I remember one time I reached out, um, I started looking up shamans. Again, I didn't know anything. And I reached out to the shaman and I sent her an email and I told her how I had gotten a hold of her. And it was because this entity had shown her to me in an email. And so when I reached out to her, she messaged me back and was like, uh, I don't know how you were able to get a hold of me. Um, I'm out in the middle of nowhere with no internet uh, reception. And the fact that your video or your email even came through, 
I can't help you. I don't know what's going on and I need you to never contact me again. And at, at that time I was at a loss. Okay. So the house was attacking me. Uh, I remember one time right at Halloween 2014, I um, reached out um, or I went into my house, excuse me. I went into the house and next thing you know, I hear this loud roar, scared the absolute shit out of me. I went running out onto the back patio because it was the closest door to get out of the house. And when I got out, my house locked me out. And that includes the, um, the chain lock locked me out. There was nobody in the house. And at this point, I'm thinking this guy is just fucking with me. Like he's in there somehow and he's fucking with me. But I could not get back in to get my purse. I had no keys. I had nothing. I had my cell phone and I was able to call a friend and she came and got me. And I stayed the night with her and she gave me, we did a rose bath and put crystals all around me and tried to clear my energy and nothing was working. So next thing I know, it's like trickling on down to my kids. And I mean, they literally watched their mother who went from having it all together to just being close to death. And I mean, very close to death. I remember one morning, I, like the night before, I was so devastated. And I remember just trying to will myself to sleep. Like I never wanted to wake up again. And I begged and pleaded with the universe to just wipe me out. I was done. And I remember the next morning I woke up and I was sitting on the back patio and there was a razor blade sitting there. And I'm thinking, you know, I've helped a lot of kids stop cutting I want to know what that felt like, you know? And so I picked up the razor blade and I just started chopping at my arm. And I'm like, this, this is nothing. Like it's not releasing any of the pain that I'm feeling. It's not releasing any of the fear. It's not releasing anything. So with that said, I went into the bathroom and I cleaned myself up and went about the rest of my day. Well, later on, the man that I was seeing brought his two boys to the house. And I remember we were like, I had walked into my room and the next thing you know, the front door, which I had just locked, slammed open and the kids went screaming and come running into the bedroom. They were absolutely petrified. And these kids are seeing everything that's going on. A couple days later, they're still at the house and I had just come walking out of the bedroom. And as that happened, all of a sudden the candle with all the, I had a, I had a cute little display of like a candle on a plate with a bunch of pretty rocks around it. And that entire plate goes flying across the living room and nobody was next to it. And the kids looked at me and their eyes were wide open and they were like, Oh my God, peace. We didn't do that. And I, I go, I know, honey, let's just get it cleaned up. And and one of them looks at me and says, but peace, we really didn't do that. And I said, I know, baby, I know. Let's just clean it up. And at that point, I'm trying to hold my composure and I'm trying not to cry and I'm trying not to be afraid. And so I remember getting into my car one day and this that song came on. Um, Oh God, what was it? It was like a small boat in the ocean making big waves. Do you know what that song is? Um, uh, let me look it up. It is the fight song. The fight song came out and I heard that song and all of a sudden it changed my life life. At that very moment, I was like, I am that small boat in this big ocean making, and I am here to make big waves. And I went home and I remember talking to a friend of mine and she had said, you know, peace, maybe you should think about doing an exorcism because I had tried to go to counseling as I spoke about in my last video about, um, them 
saying, well, yeah, so why don't you tell me all the things you like about yourself? And I'm thinking, this is so generic. It is so scripted. And it's not what I need. What I need right now is something that is so much deeper and something that is so much, um, something that's not mainstream, not religion, not anything. I just need somebody who's going to understand. So when she told me about the exorcism, I'm thinking, no, you know, I've got all these scratches down my back. I have scars from the knife in my back from the dream. I have scratches coming on in front of people who are witnessing this happening at the exact same time. I would go out and I would sit on the back patio. And the reason why I'd sit on the back patio is because I was doing all this art. I was trying to focus my energy into just beautifying something. So I started all these amazing art projects and sanded down like a wood, wooden table and I just turned it in this gorgeous piece of art. And I'm trying to be out in nature, trying to be artistic and creative to try and transmute the energy into some something beautiful, create something beautiful out of it. What I didn't realize was because I was out there so much that that's where the entity was. Another time, I um, while I was sitting there with uh, my ex-husband's cousin, I was making her a beautiful healing table. And at that very moment, I felt hot acid. It's what it felt like down my back. And when I raised up my shirt, you could see blood, scratches of three in blood on my back fresh, welted. And her eyes just got wide and I just started crying. I was like, I'm not safe anywhere. And so I remember when a psychic friend of mine had sent out an email blast about this app. And I'm not going to mention the name of the app because um, I don't want somebody who is in a demonic place ever playing with this app because it is you're opening up Pandora's box. And especially if you're ever in a dark place, in a really dark place, it is not the time to play with all these spiritual tools, ghost apps, like any of that stuff, because I didn't know any better. And because I was such in such a dark place, misery loves company. And so these entities will feed off of that energy. So when I opened the ghost app, I downloaded it like a dumbass, not knowing, you know, and I downloaded this app and I started listening to it and it started telling me that my ex-husband was on his way back in, tried to tell me that it was my, my father who had passed away in 2013 or 2009, excuse me. Um, I mean, it really had me like it, pulling at my heartstrings. This app actually told me that my husband was going to come back in and was going to take my kids. And sure as shit, he came back in and he took my kids from me. Like within a matter of a week, I got a phone call from Child Protective Services and they were going to come and investigate me. And I had showed the CPS worker my back and he goes, how do I know that you just, that mommy didn't have a wild night? And I, it was devastating because how do you explain something that is so invisible to the naked eye, you know, and if you don't have a broad mind and you're trying to deal with people who are not understanding at all, you're going to lose everything. And it made me so absolutely insane. I sounded insane. I was speaking in tongues. I was glazed over. I mean, this demonic force from this app had me convinced that I needed to commit suicide. So I reached out to Paul Dale Roberts just on a whim. I sent him an email. I sent him a picture of the scratches down my back. And I, you know, I explained to him what was happening to me. And he said, okay, and this was August of 2015. And he sent me a letter back saying, okay, peace, but I got to get my camera crew together. Um, we won't be able to show up until, and it was after my birthday, which is September 13th. And I remember, I think it was like September 14th or somewhere around there. It was like within a day or so after my birthday. And I, I told him, I said, listen, I won't make it. 
I won't be alive if, if, if I don't get the help now. Like I've been begging for help for a really long time. So Paul wrote this initial report date, August 22nd, 2015. He said, um, Deanna, Tammy, and I started snapping photos all over the house and attempted to get quick and dirty EVPs. Several attempts were made on the EVPs and no success. Finally, on the patio, we were successful. Where I kept hanging out, trying to do this art and just keep my mind busy. We captured a crisp, unintelligible EVP and could make out a male voice saying about four words. Then the second EVP said, I won't, when asked to talk to us, or it said, I am, when asked not to be a coward. At this time, we definitely knew there was something in this home. Peace raised up her shirt and showed us all kinds of scratch marks on her back. The scratch marks were in three claw marks, a disrespect for the Trinity. The scratch marks were positioned in such a way that it would be impossible for Peace to give herself those scratch marks. Of course, someone else could have done that, but that would be very unlikely. And the reason why it would be unlikely is because the man that I was seeing was having an affair with another Pisces, okay? So it was like, you know, Pisces is third party relationships. And so in South Node and Pisces says, get away from them. <laughs> You know, so it was not for me to be there, but no, no blast on Pisces, okay? Um, Peace, when telling her story, broke down and cried several times over. Deanna, Tammy, and I were at the ready to provide warm hugs for Peace. When darkness fell upon Peace, she lost everything. She lost her home. She lost her credit. She lost her job. She lost the love of her life. This demonic force was out to destroy Peace. On February 2015, fang marks showed up on the back of Peace's neck. The fang marks also appear on Peace's live-in boyfriend's neck. Peace felt a snake-like creature constricting her neck. Peace was at the ready and showed us through a photo the two puncture wounds, fang bites on the back of her neck. The bite marks look like bite marks from a large snake. Peace continues to tell us about all the scratches on her back. Every scratch mark is in three... S to three claw marks. When she gets the scratches, it feels like hot acid being poured down her, her back. The Chico Dark Force convinced Peace to attempt suicide. The suicide came so close that Peace made a suicide video, which I did. All I wanted was a hug, and I talked about that in the last video. In fact, if we did not arrive, she may have already committed suicide. There has been all kinds of activity in this home. Watch the videos. An example of this activity, or activity, excuse me, an example of this activity is crashing sound in the kitchen. And when we investigate, it was a canister that shattered. So while they're there trying to get rid of this entity that is attacking me, um, we were outside on the patio and nobody is in the house and the canister exploded. They didn't want him there. Okay. They don't want anybody there that is going to be willing to take me out of whatever it is. Because when these dark forces attack you, they want you gone. They want to instill you with so much fear and so much negativity and sadness that you succumb to suicide. You succumb to their energy. It's like, have you ever seen those movies where, you know, you're, they're climbing, you know, the good people are like trying to climb this ladder. And then all of a sudden at the very end, right as they're almost out, they grab them by their ankle and they try to yank them back down. That's exactly how I felt going through this experience was like, I was constantly at, no matter what I tried to do, no matter how kind I tried to be, I was so empathic and so loving towards everyone. And because of that, that was almost my demise. It was horrifying. It was traumatizing. It's like scary movies don't even scare me anymore. You could mash up every single scary movie into one. And it would never, ever, ever amount to the terrifying events that plagued me for almost two years. 
And had Paul, Dale Roberts, and his team, Deanna and Tammy, not shown up when they did, there's no way I would have gotten out of this experience alive. And that's when I started studying astrology and I started studying psychics and tarot and all of this stuff. And I'm like, this has to mean something. And it did. It was my mission. It had to take me to the depths of hell to get me to be who I am today. To get me to go out and still continue to help people and not be afraid, not be a victim. Because that's exactly what they want. Oh, somebody hurt me, so now I'm a victim. Invisible forces hurt me, and I'm still not a victim. So when all this shit is going on in the world, especially nowadays, I am not afraid. Because after what I went through and the experience, there's nothing scarier than that. There's nothing else that can, that can take me down the way that, that that moment in my life almost killed me. So after the exorcism, I dropped everything. I let the kids go live with their father. I stopped fighting. I'd fought for them their entire lives. And I got tired. I worked my ass off at these places and... I wasn't respected. It was meant that I wasn't supposed to be there. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm supposed to be helping people through their awakening, their mental health crises, their dark night of the soul. That dark force that almost took my life didn't win. So the dark forces that are here in right now in the present that are trying to take all of our lives. That's why I'm here fighting for all of you. Because I never want you to have to ever go through the same experience that I went through in my life. That was the most petrifying time of my life. And not everybody has to go through that experience. Now that I know astrology, it was in my fucking chart. <laughs> you know? And had it not be for me just going down the rabbit hole as spirit was sending me astrologers on my, on my Facebook page and then sending me psychics in my emails and had I not started going down the rabbit hole and just started studying all this stuff. And at the end, I had to walk away from it all. I had to shred my entire existence and every single thing that I had ever, ever been taught from my parents to my work, to my teachers, to my family, to the, the adoption that I went through. All of that was a fucking lie. The victim that I thought I was at that time, it was all a lie. It's all programmed. It's all an illusion. It's not real. What we focus on is what becomes real. And I focused my energy on the trauma. And because of that, the man that I was seeing was mirroring back. Pisces to Virgo, they're the opposite. Mirroring back everything that was inside of me that almost killed me. And now I'm not only alive to talk about it, but I'm living out magic Every single fucking day, it is a, I, I can't even believe that I'm still here to talk about it, but I am so grateful that I am. And the amount of people that I've helped because of my story, because that's why we're here. The student becomes the teacher. That's why we're here. We go through the traumas that we experience the trials and the tribulations, so that later on when somebody else who comes in and is experiencing that exact same thing, we have the antidote. And I can't thank Paul and Deanna and Tammy enough for taking out the time to be there to save my life. They were supposed to be there. That's why nobody else showed up. My family turned their back on me. 
My friends turn their back on me. Coworkers turn their back on me. The man that I was seeing turned their back on me. My kids, they didn't know any better. It was a very tormenting, traumatizing time. And if you get a second, go on over to those videos down in the description box and I'll, it, you'll see it. It's written all over me. I was probably about 100 pounds, 109 pounds. I am not that now. You can see the difference between now and then. I was dying. I was withering away. But now I'm the healthiest that I have ever been, mind, body, and spirit. And that's because perfect strangers were there when I needed them the most and they didn't make me wait. I owe my life to them. And to God, universe, spirit, and to myself. Because I fought so hard and I thought outside the box. And I was told by the courts, if I didn't start going to counseling, then they were going to take my kids. Well, that counselor, that therapist was a joke. And I needed someone like Paul to come in and to do what he did and to show me the other side. And it was really cool because he was Catholic and I believe his wife was spiritual. And I think Tammy was Christian. I remember correctly. So it was really awesome that they had, I had the whole, you know, all of it right there in front of me for me to soak off of. And that's why when I do my sessions, I don't do, you know, I don't not believe in a religion, but religion is somebody else's story. Spirituality is your own. And my journey is my own. And not everybody, like I said earlier, is going to have to go through these experiences like I did. But I'm not a victim. And I overcame what tried to kill me. So I hope with me making this video, you guys realize that there are entities out there that are working against you. Clear your energy. Go within. Figure out what is happening and then realize that this too shall pass. Don't let it take your life like it almost took mine like a small boat in the ocean, making big waves. And that is exactly what I'm doing here today. So you guys, I want to thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. If you are interested in a personal reading, I would be happy to be there for you. Uh, I love you guys all so much. And I want to thank you guys for just taking a moment and listening to my story because there's so many more chapters that I can sit here and talk about, but I feel like this is the one that really, really, really um, can touch a lot of people's lives and hopefully save you from what's about to come. The reason why I'm a healer today is because I overcame the darkness. So if you guys are willing to overcome that darkness, you too will be walking in those same footsteps, the footsteps to peace. Love you all so much. We'll chat again soon. Take care.